All right, welcome to the meeting. Um, Leo, you're up first. Well, thanks. Yeah, I prepared some slides uh, for the isolated realms. They're just pretty rough. There's still a draft, uh, but I just want to like start capturing slides that I can present to uh, other people at TC39 and other people involved, like including tag to finish up the tag reveal and to present what we have for the uh, isolated realms. I've been noticing uh, like as we've been discussing this uh, here and there, I am like very comfortable with the API, but uh, uh, people are still expecting to see something um, different, like people are not really capturing all the changes. So I'm trying to get the slides to show like right. what is new. Right, I, I just want to re-emphasize the thing I always bring up, which is I cannot evaluate the API until I see a simple membrane built on top of it. Yes, uh, yes. And at the same time, uh, I trying to bring this presentation just to discuss uh, the next steps to the API. I still didn't have time to uh, finish approach with uh, polyfill because it's uh, it's also like really hard and there is uh, so many people just bringing so many questions about the, the API. I need to find a way to quick uh, tell them like about the new changes, like uh, to explore this new, uh, this new approach, I am. People are bringing me like so many questions here and there, so I need. A, Leo, are talk. you sharing your screen? Not yet. Ah, okay. I'm not seeing anything. But yeah, Mark, uh, we we need to work on that one. Um, this is a matter of time. Yeah, we need to work on it. I am not ignoring your request, Mark. And. Yes, I, I, I don't have updates on that yet, just because time still needs to, needs to allow me doing yeah, that. And, and trust me a little bit on that one. I, it, it should be fine. I'm, I've been running in my head from how we will be able to use this, and so far, no red flag. So, but I'll have to put a time on doing that. Okay. Um, can you see the screen where actually shows a slide? Yes. Okay. So this is just a small presentation. Uh, feel free to interrupt me at any time. I'm just gonna try to show like what is new with this API and there are some discussions uh, we already have open. I just tried to bring the outstanding discussion for now. Uh, this is a current uh, proposed uh, interface for uh, the realms. So you have a, a simple constructor with the import binding to uh, that you provide a specifier string and you actually get a binding name. Um, and it can only, it, it returns a promise that is always resolved to a primitive or a callable object. Um, and also evaluate that is equivalent to an evil, but also can only um, evaluate to a primitive or a callable. I'm gonna, Try to stress. Uh, Leo, uh, Leo, go yes. back, go back one slide. Um, okay. So a couple of notes about this one. So uh, I, I use evaluating instead of eval because it's trying to at least uh, up, uh, uh, distantiate ourselves from eval. There are two, two things that are different. The first one is that if you pass an object, as the first argument right now, the spec that, that, that we finished last week will throw an error. Obviously that's too restrictive. So we'll have to work on that one. But the problem with eval, remember Mark, is that if you pass an object, it returns the object back. Yeah, um, Mike Samuel had this proposal for fixing that so that he could do his, his whole uh, typed approval thing for eval, but I, I don't know what the state of that is. Yeah, I mean, either. So for now, just saying evaluate is not equivalent to evolve, doesn't do the same. It returns, it only accepts certain return values and it only accepts in a string as a thing that you pass into it. We could go ahead and do the to a string on the first argument and to distantiate even more from evolve. Um, so this, that's kind of, uh, Leo, we need to start tracking that somewhere. Like those are the open questions that we have with this one. And obviously the naming 
uh, of both of the methods, uh, we want to also uh, discuss that. Um, okay. And by the way, Mark, we have the spec. The spec, I think, is very, very complete at this point. Um, yeah. so we, we want review from you and from uh, everyone else, uh, Daniel as well, uh, and, to see where we are with that. And uh, just go ahead, Mark. We, when I see a membrane, you'll get a review. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, um, just for clarity, uh, the specs, uh, like for me trying to write a polyfill without a spec is really hard because my brain still like on all the test 262 things. If I actually have a spec and what I'm trying here is just like to finish uh, proposed spec, I can actually do any polyfill that is actually consistent and actually matches the closest that we would have with an actual uh, native API. So having the spec helps me a lot, moving everything ahead uh, with a polyfill that is actually solid, consistent with what we can have. And I can even tell like all the things are different that we would only have in a native API. Um, okay, so moving forward. Um, yeah, so the, the main thing that is actually new uh, from these uh, isolated realms is that we don't have any cross realm object transfer. Um, the new Realm API is just, it enables communication, but it transfer anything that is known uh, primitive. Callable objects are connected uh, through auto wrapping. I don't consider them to be transferred because they're still connected. So you still uh, fix it, uh, fix it uh, still fix things as such as identity discontinuity. And that even helps, in my opinion, that it even helps on like, not uh, not providing fingerprints uh, across realms. Uh, ideally, it keeps a consistency in such a way that you don't. It's it makes it even harder for any user land code to give fingerprints across realms. And identity discontinuity is one of these well, fingerprints. Well, I think those two reasons are not the main objective of the wrapping of callable. I'll say the, the, the reason why we're doing the auto wrapping of callable is, is, a, is a ergonomics and convenience basically um, for, for, for someone to be able to write a program that can communicate back and forward between the two realms and uh, fingerprinting or, or uh, what was the other one that you mentioned, the, the first one? Um, identity discontinuity. Identity, no. It's not about identity. Um, so I, I think I think identity qualified as one of the reasons for it. It's, bit, it's just ergonomics. It's just convenience and ergonomics. Okay. Yeah. It's also ergonomic. Yeah. So I think like this API. Uh, if I have to provide opinion, I think this API is even more ergonomic in terms of like I like the way we we actually set things here and there, cross realms. Um, so yeah, that's what I uh, said about. Like functions are not directly transferred. Uh, we just we just connect them uh, within uh, the realms. Um, when what so what happens here if when we want to send a callable object, and I'm going to talk about callable object further in this is uh, on the slides, and uh, we just create a new wrap function in the receiving realm. So I, I have some examples here. Um, just try to short this example and try to highlight the part. So here I have this wrapped. Wrapped is just a wrapped function that is connected to the return of the other realm. So uh, wrapped is connected to this error function and error function when called received the arguments, uh, the parameter X and sets X to a global base and this code is running in the inside the, the, the new constructed realm and it returns okay, the string okay. So um, here I'm calling wrapped and I'm capturing the return from, from wrapped there um, in, in my realm. Uh, 
And then when I checked, the global realm has a global base received with the value that I set from wrapped. Can you go back one slide because there was a yes. slide in between, uh, uh, more, more, more. The one that was different than this one. This one, I didn't quite yeah. get what was the relationship between this one and the other one. Um, uh, the difference here, I just removed uh, the part with import binding because I'm here. I'm just showing like uh, two ways to receive uh, a wrapped function. So the uh, the first first line I'm constructing around. Second line I'm actually getting a wrapped function using realm evaluate, and the third line I'm actually uh, getting a wrapped function from code that I inject using import binding. Uh, for the examples, I'm using Evaluate to better illustrate what, what's the code underneath. Um, and I'm going to have okay. more examples okay. using the import binding. Yeah, maybe uh, maybe later. maybe removing this one. Because uh, yeah. I think if, I, if at some point before you, you mentioned that you, you have two ways of evaluate code. One is Evaluate and the other one is import binding and what that yeah. does. Then you don't, have, you don't need this one necessarily. Yeah. Um, okay, so here when I get like global received, I can actually check the value. Uh, um, and uh, wrapping functions means we can also wrap functions in both directions. So this API allows sending and receive callable objects. Uh, when I actually had uh, my last example, I was just wrapping uh, a function that I received from Realm Evaluate. Uh, but I can also like send uh, functions here and there. Now I'm using the example using the import binding. Um, so I inject code from a module file called inside-code.js and I'm actually getting the, uh, the binding name run. I'm getting its value. Um, for this example, run is a function. So a wrap function. Can you say again? Did you get your plane closed yet? Nope. I don't think that's. Are you serious? What's that? Oh. I said, are you, oh, sorry. I was just like, are you serious? <laughs> um, okay. So for, uh, so in, in this code, do something is a wrapped function uh, that is connected to the inject uh, insights called run. Um, so when I call do something, I'm actually giving an argument that is just an error function uh, that can be called. So this error function is also called within the realm. Uh, so here is just the connection. Do something is a wrapped function connected to run. And when I call do function, I also like give, um, send another function that is wrapped within the constructor realm. Uh, that I try to represent and illustrate this uh, example here, saying like run, uh, when I call do something, I actually call uh, call run with a wrapper for for this callback function. Like we don't have a name for it; we just have like the idea that uh, the error function is wrapped inside the realm. Um, uh, on the previous slide, you're, uh, you have a typo in missing a wait uh, before import binding. Oh, yes, I have a wait missing there. Uh, thanks for. I, I basically just did these slides, yes, and, and, and thanks for capturing that part. Um, import binding is a, uh, returns a promise that actually resolves the names um, async. So, by callable uh, objects that I, now that I mentioned callable uh, objects so often here, um, it's anything with a call internal. Uh, it's not limited to ordinary function. That means we can transfer function or functions, bound functions, and we can also transfer proxy wrapped functions. Uh, we can transfer more uh, things, we not transfer, but we can connect more things and we can auto wrap more things, of course. Um, but one of the goal, like when we call callable objects is that we mean we can also uh, send uh, callable proxies, proxies that have a function as a target. And, uh, question? 
Yes, right. So the um, so an object, especially like a a, a, a callable proxy, uh, objects have a lot of stuff to them. Um, uh, in addition to their call behavior, uh, I take it that the wrapper is only uh, uh, trying to mirror the call behavior and not any of the other aspects. Right. Uh, in particular, uh, not the construct behavior. Is that correct? Right, yeah. right. And then the spec right now, um, when we found a, and this is a, another open question. The, the way I wrote the spec is that we detect that is a callable we don't, at, at the time of wrapping or uh, creating the wrapper, we do not care about the construct behavior. Uh, we only care about the construct behavior. Uh, let me see if I remember. Um, I believe at the time of wrapping, I don't care about, I only check if it is a callable. And Leo, you can show the, the spec quickly. Um, and then when the time comes to do the invocation, I believe, I believe I'm allowing the, the construct behavior to happen, but with the restrictions of the wrapping mechanism, which makes the, the, the construction path a lot more useless. Let me see, uh, it's there. Um, so this is for the, no, actually scratch that. We only have the call behavior. You're, you're right. If you try to do new, yeah. we do not have that the construct behavior. You don't have construct. Yeah, yes. it just it just throws an error. Okay. Okay. Good. Yeah. Good. But but Good. we don't but we don't preclude a a callable that is also constructable to be wrapped. We allow the wrapping to happen. It's just that when you try to do new on it, it fails. Good. Good. The re the reason why I think that's good is it's again this issue about trying to keep the levels distinct. I'm, I'm you know, want to keep sort of incremental little bits of membrane-like functionality from creeping into the low level where we yeah. just have to reproduce them in a higher level. Yep. Um, that's that's why the, the, the exotic, the, sorry, the rapid function, function exotic object only have the call behavior. Right, good. There's just one thing that I want to discuss with Kariti further. Uh, also like one question for later. I'm not sure if, if we say anything, but we should probably specify the wrap function exotic object should have um, function dot prototype as their, as their internal prototype. But it, that's for that's follow up that's, that's discussion. Defined. That's defined there, that's defined. Uh, that's scroll defined. down, scroll down. Uh, to the the yeah wrap function that one the line, oh, step five is good. there good thank you of uh, course but that, that kind of things we do not have it in the spec by the way we don't have that kind of thing in the spec so I'm uh, improvising a little bit like uh, I'm setting the prototype to function prototype from color realm because <laughs> we don't have the front anymore in the, the spec today um, so yeah. So you, just you to clarify, because you can you can use once you have the realm, the realm has like its list of intrinsics, and you can use dot to access those. There's so you're saying like a, doing that color realm dot uh, percent function prototype percent. Uh, there's like something in between those, but there's a notation for this. Okay. The, so you can send me the reference for that. I, I couldn't find anything. I think that's only in 402. That's probably true. <laughs> but no, but 402 doesn't do realms. Uh, it, it only does the um, uh, bigger than, smaller than uh, kind of thing for special um, slots slot that have dynamic names. Yeah. Um, one other thing to note, we probably should never allow construct to be wrapped. Uh, I think if you try to extend a class, which has the extends clause hierarchy point to one of these wrap things, things would get bizarre, especially with new dot target. I don't know how you would be crossing realms for that. So 
Just something to think about. Yeah, that's a, that's a great example. Uh, membranes handle new del target correctly. Anything short of membranes, new del target would be a mess. Um, as far as I understand, there is no way to to provide new target because, like, if you when you create the, the exotic objects by the rules of uh, exotic of exotic objects, if you don't define them explicitly, they won't have the constructor internal. Um, so simply by like trying to, there is no way to actually uh, try to construct anything using this wrapped function that would actually defer to to the other. No, but I think we, what, what, I think what what Bradley is saying that if you have it, if you extend it and you call new on the subclass, when it goes up if it doesn't have the construct uh, defined, it will skip it. Maybe, I don't know. I, I don't remember the details of how the, the new construction process works. But it, if it skip it, then that means that you're actually creating something that has these as, as one of the pieces of it. But it, it, will, it, will be, it will be tricky. We'll have to look at it. I have to look at it. Well, in well, any case, if, if the target... We've agreed not to do construct, so we don't need to look at it, correct? Well, that's what I'm, uh, I'm. I'm curious about it. I don't know what happened when you try to use a, a, a an object in the extend clause that does not have a construct. It it will fail. It will fail. Okay. Yeah. Uh, try try extending an arrow function. Okay. Perfect. Then 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 it should be fine. You will not be able to use it. And also, in any case, uh, I'm have, I have an example uh, of that in the slides. But even if you call, if it tries to, uh, it tries to return any sort of object, it it will fail anyway. Um, I'm going to be talking about errors pretty quick. Um, so yeah, here is an example of just of me just getting a, a transferring a, a proxy to the other realm. Not transferring, not, not transferring, remember, not transferring, connecting. Not transferring, connecting, yes, yeah, sorry. When I, I need to get my brain to say, when I transfer, I actually transfer a value all the way to the other realm. When I connect, I just create this connection with wrapped functions. Um, this is an exercise that I need to do for homework. Um, okay, so this is ex in this example here, I'm just uh, connecting this callable proxy with the other round. Um, and uh, so for just general uh, revealing of what we said, uh, when we say we can actually transfer primitives, we are not limited to strings. And that's one of the big value of uh, this transfer. Uh, that means we can transfer symbol uh, values. Here I'm transferring a symbol. Like when I call do something, I transfer unique ID and I can get this unique ID back uh, from the realm. Uh, I'm just setting it in a global value in the realm and then fetching this value back. Um, and it's still the same symbol. I'm not trying to create a new symbol on top of it. It's not wrapped. It's just a primitive being transferred. Um, also with the more examples of non-callable objects, um, an attempt to transfer no callable object values would throw a type error. That's what uh, happens initially. And I here I have some examples trying to show like where these error happens, because there is a question of like if the error will happen in the realm or in the in the incubator realm or in the constructor realm. Um, so here when I try to uh, evaluate uh, and evaluate actually resolves uh, the evaluation into an object. Um, I get an, uh, the realm.evaluate would throw a type error in my incubator realm. Yeah, it's just not triple equal, it's instance of. I guess you meant like error.constructor. Instance of. Error. Yes, yes, that's a typo. I'm gonna fix this one, this one is too, smells too much.
And uh, for, for these uh, following example, oops, um, wrap functions also cannot receive non-callable uh, objects. So I still have the do something uh, function here. Um, and uh, here in this example, I even extended to say uh, to show like evaluate is not even. Um, so it, when I have the realm evaluate do something uh, is connected to an error function that would set a global value, the global days dot called. So when I try to call do something, uh, trying to transfer in an ordinary object, um, I can see the error is still a type error and the global this dot call in the other realm is still not called like it there is no calling there is no evaluation if i don't use that uh, argument and uh, here in this other example i have an error happening uh, in the inner realm in the constructed realm same thing and uh, just because in this case, I have do something that receives an argument callback. And I'm sending a, a narrow function that I'm calling poison because poison is still a callable object. So I can still transfer it when I call do something. But when I try to call um, this callback inside the realm, it tries to return a, 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 an ordinary object again. And it would throw from inside and there I'm capturing this error. Um, yeah, this is some call it poison, but sorry? No, don't call it poisoning. Okay. What about <laughs> use... what about an actual throw? What what happens if the uh, oh I, I I have the examples for that. Just hold on, please. Right. Okay. Uh, yes, yeah, so I uh, uh, the idea is I'm trying to progressively show the examples Good. instead of just trying to throw them out <laughs> to everyone. It's too much information. Um, um, so uh, here I'm not using the poison, but actually using an error that is probably um, OK. Uh, here I'm using a, a next sample that I'm actually trying to transfer array. Array is an actual function. It does have the call ability, but uh, it just returns a new object when you call array. Um, so yeah, so if you I try to call do something array, it too can transfer, uh, connect array. So callback is a wrapped function connected to array from my incubator realm. But if I try to call callback, it will throw a type error. Um, and uh, yeah, here we have what happens when we don't handle these errors. I have all of my examples just using this error. Um, I'm trying to fix all of them. Yeah, Mark, uh, what happened is that if, if you, um, Leo, you show this back quickly um, the any error that occurred on the other side uh, whether that's because the, uh, the incubator realm is calling a function or the realm is calling a function that was wrapped either way um, uh, and this is also a, a interesting conversation to have is a step number eight um, once we finish to call the, the when the 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 function that is being wrapped finish the completion we receive the completion record we determine that the only thing that this this function this function that the, the wrap function can return is a normal completion um, and if it is not a normal completion we 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 create a, a new type error for the caller realm. Now we know that we have multiple completion types. We not only have the normal completion, uh, we we also have the break, the continue, um, yeah. uh, oh. and and the the obviously the error itself, the abrupt uh, the throw. 
none of those qualified as a proper result. So that's why we only focus on the normal one. Now, in the future, we decide that we are going to also do something about maybe promises. We could, we could revisit this and open the door for promises to also be wrapped. Um, that means a completion record for other things like a break or continue and so on might work. Uh, can a function ever terminate with a break or continue completion? I don't think so. Yeah, I think the only things that could reach this path are, are uh, exceptions. But I think that this, this idea of replacing all the things that are thrown with a new fresh type error seems very sound to me. And like a, a membrane system will probably not reach this path. We'll probably instead catch the errors beforehand and then send something that that can be you know shared to the other side or transferred yep that sounds right to me okay can, can you just scroll down a little bit more leo i think i put a, also a note somewhere i don't know somewhere i put a note saying that the uh, this the specification i don't think has anything about the stack trace and so on and so i suspect that the implementers can decide what kind of information that error will have. Uh, if the error will have a, a full information or will have a truncated information, I, I suspect it will be the full information of the yeah, error. I don't see anything specifically. Sure. It might be the truncated information. If we're claiming that this is some kind of boundary, then you know there's already a place where the web platform does this. When you have a, a cross-origin script tag, and then there's an error from that, then that error gets, um, you know, you don't get to see what happened there. And this case ah. feels really similar. So ah, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, that's, a, that's a good, a good prior art. Okay, got it. I think I think we should provide recommendations to implementers in these details to avoid, at least for the web, maybe non-web platforms will want to do something different to think, make sure that they're aligned. I think what we want to do is we want to delegate this issue to the error stack proposal, and then and then. Uh, Deal with it there. Yep. Maybe, but this may ship before the error stack proposal. And so we we'll want to give early input for that. Ah, you are that optimistic about this one. Huh? Oh, yeah, I'm pretty optimistic about this one. <laughs> I am too. Uh, good. So uh, moving on. Um, so here I have the a, a, a near the unbroke completion from evaluate uh, and what I want to highlight here is just like the realm is actually throwing a, a normal error uh, but we always capture the type error uh, probably like the specs that we just showed uh, here describe yeah. these better for this group <laughs> yeah but here is actually like I'm also capturing another error um, when I call do something, I try to, uh, uh, the, the error function from the realm tries to return array. No, that's not an error. Uh, and this is actually missing. Oops. Another thing or just, I just wanted to use. Okay. I, I could use array and double parentheses but yeah i'm here i'm trying to just return like a, a an intrinsic from the other realm when i try to call it it returns and yeah still throw a type error in this realm um okay one of the things that is actually important uh when we talk about these connected functions they are not transferred is because they also like won't carry properties um, so here I have a function fn and I try to add properties like I try to call to add secrets to this function and uh, when I get do function of course there's something it's missing the function here of I received a uh, CB here is a, the wrapped function connected to FN, but CB still doesn't have any secret. It still doesn't have any property uh, secret. 
secrets. Yeah, well, 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 I recommendation, Leo, for the, the, the examples that you have is like, uh, in this case, you use FN, and then the, the, the argument that you pass, call it wrap FN or something like that. So people can start connecting the dots that FN is actually a, a, the function, and then what they receive is a wrap version of it. Done. We're doing the other examples too. Uh, so yeah, this is the general overview. Uh, just going to bring some outstanding discussions. Can we can we go back a couple slides, please? I spotted something here that might be um, interesting um, with regards to membranes. Um, it could be that the uh, Maybe this isn't relevant. I don't know yet. Um, I'm thinking about the case of static uh, properties on a class. Static, as, as I recall, that'd be sort of similar to what you're talking about here. If we tried to pass a class into the realm, uh, this is implying that the class's static properties and methods would not be carried along with it. Um, is that correct or no? That's and is correct. that something? He's and is correct. that is that something we want? Because no. a membrane might want to install those. Yeah. I'm, 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 I'm just thinking them aloud here and maybe I'm wrong. Right, the, the classes will, will now function across a realm. Yeah, this so, is, uh, I'm sorry, correct, correct go ahead. Uh, yeah, the, the classes will now work across realm. So really, you're just getting a callable that you try to do to call it, what does it do? When you when you get a class today, what does it do when you call it? It throws an error because you have to new it, and that's what you're gonna get here. So if yeah. you want to transfer classes, you have to do the proper membrane wrapping. So what you pass around is not really a, a the the class. You 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 pass around a, the information about the class. So when okay. you, you can construct it on the other side. Okay, thank you for clarifying that. And when you pass a wrapped function across this boundary, you still get a wrap. You you don't. You, it doesn't unwrap. You don't get the original back. You still get a wrapped function. Correct. So that end. What happens? It's correct. If you get a. And if you're in B and you have a a a, a B wrap a B wrapper of an A function, mm -hmm. pass that in a call to A. In A, what you receive is not the unwrapped original function. All right, yeah, there's no unwrapping. You get a new one, yes. Okay, good. You get a new one. And there's no, and there, and there's no um, identity tracking. Every time you pass it, you get a fresh one. Right, yep. yes. yes, I agree with that. Yeah. Okay. So that in, a, interesting things. Uh, is that a thing, uh, wait, sorry. Is that a thing that you want to preserve, Mark? Yes. Uh, this okay. is again, That's it's, good to know. It's really, it's really crucial to just get the layering of this thing is not a membrane. This thing right, is right. something with which to implement a membrane. Membranes are going to do the identity tracking. This one should not, because if we do, then we'll have two yep. partially redundant interfering identity tracking mechanisms. Yeah. Uh, one, one thing, what, what, very interesting things, observations in general that I have found when thinking about putting a, a membrane on top of these, or even a more simple implementation, not necessarily a membrane. And array seems to be a crucial aspect of a JavaScript program. So how do you transfer a non-deterministic list of things to the other side? Um, uh, seems like it's very hard to do it. But it turns, at the beginning, I was saying, okay, well, this is going to be a problem. Like in the case of a class, if I want to transfer the shape of the class from one side to another, how can I do that? Um, what kind of things can I have that describe the, 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 the shape of the class in a single call to the other side? Um, and it turns out that we could actually use the arguments as a way to transfer the values of an array from one side to the other one. Um, so if you call a wrap function and you pass n number of arguments, then on the other side, you can just 
uh, in the Oriran function that you prefer to receive those arguments, you're just receiving an array of them if you do um, uh, the proper de declaration for that. So there are ways in which, which we will be able to transfer a large uh, quantity of data uh, between those functions in terms of providing the, the foundation for the membrane to be built on top by providing that, those shapes. Uh, so I was, I was experimenting with something like you pass a, a number and uh, kind of a pair, uh, a, a, a key value pair by using the arguments for that where the order in which those arguments arrive can be analyzed on the other side and recreate the shape of the class or recreate the shape of an object on the other side. Uh, so it's very easy to create a library whose job is basically transfer objects from one side to another or classes or whatever kind of object by implementing that kind of uh, user land protocol. And it works pretty well. So I'm like experimenting with that for now. Okay, so trying to move forward, there is another outstanding question on this, um, which is actually a little bit more uh, cloudy here on uh, what we, where we should uh, actually go. Um, there has been a question regarding uh, on usage of import without fetching a uh, binding name. Uh, there are occasions where we don't need to import any name. Uh, most of these for user code injected uh, that we inject into a realm. Uh, in this example here, I have a test framework example. And uh, where yeah, I actually I, I, load my test I, framework. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, I think uh, we'll have to have a regular import, but then that has a problem. Uh, um, yeah, I have. I, I stress out these uh, options here, if you want to. I'm not understanding what it's the... like. You don't want you. You have a, a, a an app that has eval disabled. You want to evaluate code. You don't. You don't. You don't want any transfer between the two sides. You only want to evaluate code there. The code does something and goes away. Um, in that case, there is no binding to really. I see. Uh, get out of yep. uh, the realm. So what do you do? Um, okay. The, uh, yeah. the, the real question <laughs> is what happened if, or, or one question is what happened if today, I don't remember the spec that I- I, I lost your audio. Oh, I, I don't remember what I did on the spec for that. That's the part that is very flaky because it's, it's a host, um, this, describing the host behavior. What happened if test framework does not have a run export today? I think that it throws an error. It, yeah. it, 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 it resolved to, uh, it, it, it actually throws on, on the promise, yeah. Yeah, so uh, there is actually uh, one thing with the status quo here as well. I probably uh, need to write this down, but uh, like the status quo, quo for now is like, uh, the binding name is always required, but we, uh, but even if the name is always required, you can still uh, write uh, another module code that does these things, like that those loads the test framework and the other file. You don't need to load them directly into your incubator realm. So you just you can just create a layer on top. And, and, and I, I think, uh, yeah, Carrie, you are muted. I'm not muted. I? Maybe maybe my audio is not good. No, um, Karidi, I can hear you fine. Yeah, it must be you, Leo. Um, the maybe drop the BPM or something. Uh, the we, we talk about creating a exotic namespace object that uh, that that might be a, an alternative solution. We talk about it, uh, Daniel, myself, and Leo. I think uh, rather than uh, importing one binding, we import uh, the, the entire thing, but what we get back is a, a exotic, a, another exotic, uh, namespace object, uh, that 
wraps the entire namespace object, uh, which is also an exotic object anyways. Uh, and then if you try to access one of the bindings at any given time, uh, and the binding is not a primitive or a callable, it throws an error. That's another alternative. So we eliminate this weird API. I'm, I'm fine with that one too, but I think Daniel has some ob objections about that one. Sorry, doesn't, what doesn't make seem... objections about which? The, the, uh, the, the, the conversation that we have about having a, a exotic wrap. Oh, yeah, this is only a lot more clear in, in Leo's following slides. Let's let him continue presenting. Oh, okay. All right, I'm sorry if I talked on top of anyone because uh, my audio was cutting off and I couldn't hear anyone else. Um, it should be solved now. Yeah, so uh, the alternatives to that we can uh, explore to import uh, to for this import binding. This is my least favorite one. The alternative one uh, is actually have an import binding and uh, round dot import. Um, I, I don't like it very much because we can actually extend that to something that is a little bit better with alternative to uh, use import with options back because that can actually match um, the realm.import and uh, with the import of sections. So uh, when I have the example here, I have the dot, uh, I change, I replace import binding with a realm prototype import with the specifier in an options bag. And I say the binding that I want. Uh, this actually matches my, um, this actually matches the import sessions, the options back in the import sessions where you have uh, a cert type inside this object uh, we use for options. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm missing a word. This matches the what? So we have the proposal for import assertions currently on stage oh, three. Assertions, okay, got it. Assertions, yes, sorry. Okay. So the, the options bag could serve both purposes at once, both yes. to list the binding and to list the import assertions. But, but it's still the problem for me continues to be the promise resolution of the second line, the await our import. What's yeah, the then, problem? Can you explain? Well, uh, it, it, will have to return, it will have to resolve to undefined. Yes. Yeah. Um, which kind of mess my head because people already has a predisposition for import and what, what it returns. Yes. And, yeah. and that's why I was proposing the wrapping of the name and space object, which doesn't seem like a weird, too, too weird. And, and then it's very easy to teach people like you're importing. That one's on Leo's next slide. Could you, could we go to the uh, slide rather than yeah. talk about um, it here? And before I go to the next slide, also like status quo is also like an option too. I'm just providing alternatives to the uh, current status quo. The status quo is good. Uh, it's good too. I'm just bringing this to the discussion to make sure we explore these parts. So alternative three is actually having a module namespace resolver. This is uh, also inspired on uh, another suggestion from uh, Matthew Huffman. Um, there is a thread discussion going on about this. And uh, this is a little bit weird and it seems like a little bit overkill and I'm not sure if I'm touching the responsibility of a main brain. So what I have here oh. is a realm module uh, resolver. I'm calling, giving this name in lack of like a better name in this shortness of time. Um, so when I import uh, the realm, I, like I just run one import and I have a special object that does have a get function. Does it have anything else, just a get? I, I thought about like using the map, but I, I don't see any usefulness or anything that, uh, from anything else a map can provide uh, to me. But like, there is, there is nothing I can actually use from map that I like or that I want from this. I just want to get to get the binding value. Because what we're getting here is just a buying value. And the realm, realm module is really just a, a thin wrapper around a namespace object, right? Yeah. So I'm not suggesting, I don't know, I'm not advocating this. I'm just asking a question. 
Uh, given that all you're doing is doing a get with things that the namespace object would show as properties, why which are static anyways. Yeah, why doesn't this thing just show them as the same named properties? Yeah. Well, it would have to act a little bit weirder than that because when you have functions that are exported from the module, you'd probably want to wrap them each time the get function is called because these yeah. are mutable live bindings. So that and uh, if uh, the module is a Danable module, uh, you have problems because that would return a promise and you would never be able to actually import those modules. I'm sorry, say that again. I if you have that. a Danable module, a module that exports a Dan function, um, it would end up being chained in the promise and the Dan function would automatically be called, which returns a promise, uh, which would break uh, the it import. Throw, it will throw in that case. It will right, throw. What does that have to do with any of this? No, 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 he's correct. Who was talking, Matthew? Yes. Yeah, uh, yeah he's correct. If we, if, we, if we do the real module to just provide the properties for each of the static, if there is one name that is then, then you will never be able to call that one. I'm sorry, I still don't understand what kind of code pattern you're imagining that will lead to this being an issue. Are you saying that if we have if, they are, if you create a module that exports a uh, a property named then, yeah, and for, and if that is a and and presumably that's a function, the module as a whole the the, the well, what, what, what the is it that you're doing on the realm importing side that that runs into this? Nothing on the realm importing. It's the regular promise resolution uh, because the realm import. Um, returns a promise. And when you do promise resolution with an object that has a then function, that then function is automatically called by the promise uh, resolution mechanism. Oh, oh, you're saying if it wasn't based on the get method, if it was based on, right, sorry. Right, okay. right, right. Yeah. Yeah. It, but the, but the, live, of... the live, the live, the, the live, uh, the, the returning a new one every time, that one is a very interesting one. That's, that's a very strong reason. I, I think we need to uh, defer uh, some discussion on what is actually the resolution, like if that framework is a, has a venable uh, namespace, we should probably discuss further, but not here, uh, what is realm module, like a resolution of the venable namespace or just the namespace that has then function. Um, Speaking for a bunch of us, uh, we we have an eleven o'clock meeting. Yeah, and uh, that's that is just it. And the other last part is just a bike shed. Here I have an examples of all the alternatives. Um, the other, the last one was just a bike shed. With if we stick with import binding, uh, we should probably discuss in actually getting in, renaming it to import value. It's yeah, because it's are, not a dynamic binding. My feedback. Uh, in general, feedback is that uh, examples are great, but we need to do better at the beginning of it, explaining what this is. Because this group has already a lot of knowledge about what this is and the direction we're going, but the, the bigger group will, have, will be lost in the examples without understanding what, what we're trying to do in terms of uh, uh, the separation of the realm, the isol isolated realm. You yeah. have to, to provide a lot more context before we get into the examples oh, yeah, and, and even answering a bunch of the questions before we get into the examples. Yeah, uh, I, I, I needed to present this to make sure like what I uh, need to add next. I, uh, my goal is actually to improve this for the next TC39 meetings and tag and present to everyone, but like, um, it's easy. Uh, it's it's good to capture outstanding questions from this meeting. It's wonderful to see progress made in a direction that will be amenable to the browser vendors. Thanks for the presentation. Thank you. Um, and given that we're out of time, I'm going to stop the recording. Thanks again. <laughs>